itself is a cancerous tumor that has eaten into the very fabric of our existence. It is commonsensical and logical that if it takes a man with two legs. Ladies and gentlemen, the Nigerian justice system has failed the common man. And the reason why that girl presents her body to that lecturer from her practice is because she is fully aware. And in our own education system, corruption is a culture. How can bribery not be a way of life? Hello and welcome to the Expression Debates brought to you by Youngsters Foundation with support from DFID Nigeria and other partners. This youth initiative is designed to increase the voice of the youth and encourage their participation in contemporary national issues. My name is Divine Prince Abby and joining me today in the studio is none other than the gorgeous... <laughs> Marion Dunedu and I am so happy that you could join us on today's episode which promises to be fun and engaging. It's been a battle of brains. Wits and oratory as 32 audacious undergraduate teams from over 20 tertiary institutions in Nigeria emerge from the regional auditions in Enugu, Lagos, and Abuja to get to this grand finale where we have just eight teams left and standing. Wow. It's been quite a journey. Quite a journey indeed, Miriam. We've seen 32 teams slog it out all through the elimination series and into the semi finals with 16 teams. And now we have just eight teams in the finals and it's promising to be very, very, you know, engaging. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, it has been an emotional one too because we have seen such good teams also crash out from uh, this series. And I'm looking forward to that team that will get that star prize of 500,000 Naira. Remember, second prize is still up for grabs, 300,000 Naira. And third prize is 200,000 Naira. You know, I'm never going to get used to hearing that. Same <laughs> here. Not. Same really, here. On the grad, even as a graduate, it's not going to be a bad idea to be a part of this competition. Mm. Oh, yes. But they have to organize one for graduates. <laughs> sure. Anyway, today promises to be worth your time as viewers get to win stops too. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll give you the highlights of today's package. Stay on this channel. <laughs> Welcome back to the Expression Debates brought to you by Young Stars Foundation with support from DFID Nigeria and other partners. Now, this youth initiative is designed to increase the voice of the youth and encourage their participation in contemporary national issues. So what do we have for our amazing audience today, Miriam? Exciting stuff. Two teams are going to be arguing on a topic. Nigeria needs a unicameral legislature to cut the cost of governance and mm. increase governance effectiveness. Wow, interesting. So since this is the grand finale, each team has just one chance, just one, to grab that prize money for 500,000 Naira. Wow, just thinking about that amount, you know, that's a lot. Think of what you could do with that, mm -hmm. you know. And this team's, this is the closest they're going to get to that star prize of 500,000 Naira. Now remember, you as a viewer at home, you're not left out because you stand a chance of winning some really, really amazing prizes. You can join our weekly quiz and get recharge cards and also join our campaign, I Choose Integrity, and stand a chance of winning some cool prizes. To participate, and we log on to our website on the screen, or check us out on our social media platforms for more information. All right, so the topic for debate today, Nigeria needs a unicameral legislature to cut cost of governance and increase governance effectiveness. What's your take on that, Miriam? Hmm. Well, we reduce that. We, we tend to save more money. That is the truth. So That's what I think too, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, yeah, mm. I think. Well, let's see what the <laughs> debaters themselves have to say about I'm that sure one. I'm sure they'll be able to shed more light on that. <laughs> yes, I'm sure they will. <laughs> but before we go to the debate arena, let's just go to the streets and see what Nigerians have to say about this. We'll be right back. We, we run the most expensive form of government in the world. So any form of cutting it is better. The current expenditure is too much. We need capital expenditures to develop the economy. Okay. In the other way around, if you reduce, then the other way altogether, uh, the consequences may be there. Because sometimes in a one-way setting, it, come, it may become a monopoly of decision taken. But if the other way is there is a challenge, they will iron out it issues properly. You know, the type of money they are calling an individual withdraw from the government force or from agencies, maybe a map out the project, somebody will just take, we'll be hearing about 500 million, uh, 200 million dollars or naira. Somebody just take it away. That money can service those people who think they are too much. Can pay their salaries and their allowances. The only thing the allowances and payment are so high. If they reduce the cost, their payment their salaries, like that, that of uh, civil servants, 
it may not be much. But the way, the other way around, if you read the course and sincerely they work with what we are they are telling us, it will work. But even if you reduce to ten man, ten man legislature, one single legislative forum, uh, and the corruption and the way they are doing it, they may even more have more chance to do the country. Well, you've heard from Nigerians themselves, they've talked about what they think. And uh, some very, very interesting points of views there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's not just going to be about what Nigerians on the street have to say about this topic. We have to hear from the debaters themselves about how they debate for and against this motion. This should be a very, very interesting one. Yes. So for today, we'll be having Tim Quora from the University of Ibadan and Tim Fernand from the University of Ilorin. Judges, of great relevance to this debate is the old English saying, too many cooks spoils the broth. It simply means, if you entrust an assignment to too many people, it will not be properly done. You know why? Because the quality of a system is not dependent on the number of personnel employed, but on the quality of personnel employed. And although it has been said that a tree cannot make a forest, today I stand to proceed that too many trees will only create shelter for wild animals. It is upon this basis that I assert that Nigeria needs to adopt unilateral legislature to cut the cost of governance and improve effectiveness. Unicameralism is a system with one legislative body. Why bicameralism is a system with two legislative bodies as defined by Paul Kobisek in his book, European Politics. Judges. It is often said that two heads are better than one. But when two heads perform the same res performs a responsibility at the same rate at which a single head would have performed the same, then it can simply be said that that additional head is nothing but a burden. The same can be said of bicamera bicameralism, which achieves less legislative effectiveness than unicameralism and was still at a greater cost. According to a, the policy brief, of the Minnesota House of Representatives Department of Research in 1999. Unicameralism is a small system, it's a small house, small house and very cost effective to run. It is not surprising that countries like Sweden, Finland, Norway, New Zealand adopt unicameral system of legislature to cut the cost of their legislation while maintaining their position as one of the most developed nations in the world. Moreover, According to an article by Eva Alexander, titled, Bicamera versus Unicamera, the pros and the cons. The simplicity of the legislative process of a single chamber automatically gives room for greater trans transparency and by extension, accountability. Ladies and gentlemen, when a system is accountable, it is easy and pretty much easy to cut the costs and focus on the effectiveness of, on the effectiveness of that government. But when a system consists of unnecessary frivolities and unnecessary complications like the bilateral system, like the bicameral legislature, accountability becomes as equivalent as getting water from a rock, and effectiveness becomes an illusion, a fantasy that will never turn reality. Moreover, and in addition, according to an article published on Infopedia, about 51% of the world nation's government adopt unicameral legislature as of 2014, 59% rather, and only 41% of these nations adopt bicameralism. Do you know why? Still based on the re same reason, cost effectiveness. One of the goals of any organization is to achieve the best results while doing it by, cutting, by getting it done at the least possible cost. And this is what unicameralism does. But bicameralism, automatically and unconsciously exposes the system to corruption due to too much of personnel in government, creation of committees and subcommittees for every single decision that has to be made. These are nothing but unnecessary frivolity disguised as necessity.
The nature of the Nigerian society is one, it is a multi-ethnic society, which means representation is key. But secondly, Nigeria has a history of inter-ethnic violence and violence whenever a minority group feel they are being maligned or sidelined by the government. This is something that must be stopped. What this means is that there must be inclusive, in inclusivity in government through representation. But why must this be something that comes from the legislature? The legislative arm of government is one that makes laws for the entirety of a, gov of a co country, all right? Everyone in that country, regardless of ethnicity or gender or religion, must abide by those rules made by the legislature. Panel, if representation is needed in any place, it is in the legislature so that the laws made will not favor one group over another. Panel of judges, what this means, panel, is that Nigerians must be well represented in its leg legislature. The Nigerian system of legislature currently practiced is bicameralism, and it is su su supported by Chapter 5 of the Nigerian Constitution. We must channel our minds into what caused the framers of the Constitution to include this. The, um, the, the Nigerian Senate, the Nigerian House of Representatives consists of 360 representatives. What this means is these representatives represent constituencies in a state. So what happens is that if from a particular state, we might have five representatives, six representatives, and the likes. So what these people represent are their constituencies, all right, and not the generality of that state, or not the gen or not, and do not make laws that will affect the state or the nation, all right, just their immediate constituency. We think this is a problem with that kind of legislature, which is what they promote. Why? The first problem in that kind of legislature is because it promotes inequality, and which is something we do not not think any government should desire. How does it promote inequality? Because in the current status quo, we have of the 36 states, we have 19 states from the north. So what happens is that there is a majority of the northerners in the lower house of assembly. That is unequal and that is the kind of thing that causes conflict in Nigeria. But then secondly, it leads to divisiveness. How? Because the representatives there do not promote the Nigerian agenda, but their constituent agenda. And that is not something we agree with panel of judges, we must understand that national integration in a, continue, in a country like Nigeria is key. If we want to promote national integration, we must have a system where every part of the country feels like they are being represented and that only happens in the upper house of the chamber, which is the Senate house of chamber. Why? Because three senators come from a state, so they are not representing the interests of constituents, but those states and in, by extension, the entirety of Nigeria are represented well in the extra in upper house of government. Panel, we must understand in conclusion that this debate does not occur in a vacuum. In every society where there is a large majority, there, there are several ethnic groups like the United States of America, like United Kingdom, we have bicameral legislation. Why? Because those are the only kind of legislation that can ensure that this wide, these different groups are well represented and they feel they can contribute positively to the development of that nation, proudly opposition. If you're just joining us, this is the Expression Debates brought to you courtesy Youngsters Foundation with support from DFID Nigeria and other partners. This youth initiative is designed to increase the voice of the youth and give them an active participation in contemporary national issues. Wow. Yep. Eight teams. Eight teams. Arguing for the mm. star prizes of 500,000 naira, 300,000 naira, and 200,000 naira for the first, second, and third places, respectively. Hmm. At this point, I think. I need to comment on what we've just seen. <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> the first speaker from Team Quora, you know, I've been following that guy from Same here. semi-finals, Same here. and then mm. down, he's been relentless and mm. really confident and yes. eloquent and obviously very intelligent, giving his points, facts, and figures. Yeah, yeah. Wow, the guy has he's, been amazing. He's been brilliant, uh, Miriam. We've he, seen his journey, like you said. Yes. We've seen him 
stage after stage, round after round, he has delivered in his points in a very coherent manner. You know, he's very concise, very confident. Yes. Wow, I don't know if Cora might just take this one, but the, the second speaker has had a lot to do. Okay. Yeah, they have, yeah, you know, <laughs> to be able to win this one, the second speakers still have to bring it on. You know what I'm saying? Now the ball is in their court. Can the second speakers do justice to this topic? We're going to find out shortly. Norway, Finland, Denmark. These are the top three countries of the top 10 most well-governed countries by the Rule of Law Index 2016. Among the top five, only Australia employs the bicameral system of government. Moving on to support effectiveness in governance. In 1953, Denmark's constitutional review moved from bicameralism to unicameralism. What was the result? After 1960, effective legislation brought about inclusion of free education and healthcare system and a more inclusive employment scheme. Also, from 1960 to 1973, the average annual GDP moved to 4.6% from the previous 2.4 before 1953. According to the Johansson 19, 1985 report, bicameralism offends effectiveness in two scenarios. In the scenario where the upper and lower legislations share equal amount of power, there's a situation of head-to-head -head -head conflict because each of them share equal power and they cannot decide on what to do. And in the instance where they do not share equal amount of power, the question of necessity is begged. Because why do you need another level who, does not, who performs the same function as others will? Nigeria, for instance, in the Senate, the Senate is less representative of the people than the House of Reps. However, why would we need a Senate to pass senatorial bills when the House of Bill could just do it anyways? There is no economy without efficiency. Time is money, people. And unicameralism saves time. Unicameralism, in all truth, brings about heavy burden of workload. But this heavy burden of workload is enough to chase our mediocre legislators and re replace them with a few effective accountable ones, as accountability is the beginning of responsibility that is gained from transparency. When my opponents say that Nigeria is a large country and we might not be well, represent re well represented by unicameralism, one will take the chance of poor representation against the certainty of misrepresentation. No two houses that are working together can match the speed, efficiency, and effectiveness of a house working on its own. Two good heads are better than one in truth, but one genius head is, however, better than 10. Thank you. All protocols duly and respectfully observed. Ladies and gentlemen, we must realize that a country, the United States, which we consider as a world power, and which every single individual, including proposition team in today's debate, agrees is a case study when we study the leagues of nations used to engage in unicameral, unicameral legislature. But then over time, they had to change to bicameral legislature because they found out that it couldn't solve their problems. Two problems they tried to solve. One, the effective leadership through representation, and two, the separation of power to neutralize decision. Ladies and gentlemen, these same two problems are what Nigerians face today. And unicameral legislation cannot solve these problems. Therefore, Nigeria does not need unicameral legislature to cut cost of government and increase governance effectiveness. But then secondly, we engage on the checks and balances and how it helps in effective decision making. A very intriguing example is where Samuel Ogundikbi engaged 
in the 33 bills that were voted upon in the House of Representatives and the Senate, and how the House of Representatives actually voted to actually voted out these bills, even when the Senate had also voted out those bills the day before. Now, how intriguing this is, is because when Yakubu Dogara, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, was asked why they wasted time on voting on bills that had already been rejected, he said that he wanted the House of Representatives to vote for these bills so that their decision can be put on record. This only shows that the House of Representatives also engages in this decision making to help make checks and balances and engage that we have effective governance. Because we must understand that when laws are being passed, these laws are rigid. And therefore, society and billions of Nigerians would continue to suffer if these laws are not made properly. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, having showed you how Nigeria does not need unicameral legislature to solve um, cost of governance and governance effectiveness, I bet to rest my case. Thank you. Wow, welcome back. That was some round. Something. The second, you know what? This actually looks like the final because we're <laughs> seeing teams go at each other like that. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like the Battle of the Titans, you know? But uh, at this point, I don't know if I can choose. I might have to sit on the fence for this one, Miriam. Okay, so it's your turn now. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can choose between Cora and uh, Fornax. Well, for me, I'm going with Cora. Okay. Quora. I think they should Quora. do this. But we are not the debaters, of course. Or the judges. And we are not the judges. So yeah. <laughs> let's just go to the scoring board and see what the panel of judges have decided. We'll be right back. Wow, congratulations. Team Quora has taken this round. That that is brilliant. A brilliant display there and and you got to give kudos to both teams i think fornax did well too mm -hmm. cora did well i think the judges really had their work cut out for them on that one it wasn't easy choosing true yeah mm -hmm. but i must say that was an obvious win it was obvious <laughs> i wouldn't say obvious i don't think it was that, that obvious, was obvious but kudos to, to both teams they've done well and um, especially to team cora so, don't forget, you are esteemed viewers and not left out, of course. You can participate in our weekly quiz to turn the chance to win recharge cards and also join our campaign. I choose integrity to turn the chance to win lots and lots of amazing prizes. To participate and win, log on to our website on the screen or check us out on our social media platforms for more information. That's right. In closing, we just want to say a big thank you to all our partners. You made this possible and we say that we are indeed grateful. So we come your way, same time, same place, same station. And next week, we just want to leave you with this. We can build a corrupt-free Nigeria in our, in our lifetime, lifetime if you join us. us.